What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go through a quick practical summary of Matplotlib. At the core of Matplotlib are figures and axes. So basically Matplotlib graphs your data on figures like Windows, Jupyter widgets, etc. And each of these figures can contain one or more axes. Now to show what I mean, let's look at an image that I pulled from the documentation of Matplotlib. And what we have is the general image is the figure and each axis has a set of sub-objects that belong to the axis. Things like major and minor thick labels, axis, and so on and so forth. Now let's go through the basics of plotting with a Matplotlib figure. Now here, what we're doing is we're creating our figure in our axis. Then we are creating our data, just some uh, randomly normalized data. Then we're setting up our axis, the x and y axis, and then we are plotting on a specified axis. We're setting the ticks to match the axis that we created with np.arrange. Same thing for uh, the y axis. Then we're setting the labels to have the numbers in the x axis variable that we created here. And we're setting rotation to 45 so that we can see the numbers in a 45 degree angle. Here we are setting the title, and here we are setting the grid mode on. Now, this looks like this. So as we can see, we have the Y label, X label, the axis, the title, and the random data uh, plotted according to the colors that we've defined. Matplotlib offers two basic ways to create graphs, the object-oriented style, and the one relying on the PyPlot module that automatically creates and manages the figures and the axis. To showcase what we mean, let's look at an example of object-oriented style plotting. So in object-oriented style plotting, we create the figures and axis, so we manage how the plot is going to be organized. Here I'm plotting the data from the x variable with a label called linear. Here I'm plotting just the quadratic function of that x variable. And then here the cubic function, I'm setting the x and y labels. I'm setting a title, and then I am activating the legends so that we can visualize here the names of the labels for each plot. In the PyPlot style, we don't have to worry about managing figures and axes because the PyPlot module does that for us. So in this same example, we're just calling plt.plot three times, setting the X label, Y label, and title, and calling legend, and we get the same plot. Now, one question that might arise is, when should I use one style versus the other? In the documentation, Matplotlib argues that you should pick one strategy and stick to it, instead of mixing both. However, the suggestion they give is to restrict PyPlot to interactive plotting, like stuff you do in Jupyter Notebooks, for example, and prefer the old style plotting for stuff like functions and scripts that are intended to be reused as part of a larger project so not embedded in an interactive environment. This is an example of a function signature for plotting with Matplotlib. Here I'm creating some data, and then I'm plotting with this function signature using the object-oriented style plotting. The result is something that looks like this. In terms of formatting the style of your plot, there are many options that you can use. In this example, similar to the one that you can find in the documentation, I'm showing you how you can plot with red dashes, blue squares, and green triangles. You can see more about this on the actual documentation. I will make sure to put relevant links in the description. Finally, we can also do plots of categorical variables. In here, I have a list containing cats, dogs, and dragons, and a few values, 5, 25, and 125. Here, I'm creating a figure and setting the size. I am then creating a first subplot and giving it an ID, and giving it an ID number. Finally, I'm plotting a bar char with the names that I'm pulling from this list and the values that I'm pulling from this list. I'm setting the color to be red and the label to be called bar char. Then I activate plt.legend so that we can see the labels in the graph. And then I'm doing something similar for the second plot. And finally, I'm setting the name of the full plot to be categorical plots. When we see the result, this is what it looks like. Now, working with multiple figures in Matplotlib, 
Well, say you have a function f of t that gives you the exponential multiplied by the cosine of 2 times pi multiplied by 7 uh, input. We can then define uh, two sets of inputs, create our figure, create a first subplot, and then we're plotting the first input. And in the y-axis, we're plotting the result of applying our function to that first input. And then we're doing the same thing with the second input. The result looks like this. And the cool thing is that Matplotlib makes it very easy to use plt.subplot with the indexes for the rows and columns where we want to see our data plotted. So we can see here that uh, it's very easy to nominate which axis I want to be plotting on using Matplotlib. You can also use figure numbers to create multiple figures. Like here, I'm, say, I'm setting plt.figure1, and I'm creating a plot there. And then I'm creating plt.figure2 and creating another plot there. When I show this, this is what I get. It's very simple and intuitive. Now, Matplotlib also allows you to work with text, for example. Here, I'm setting two variables, mu and sigma, to be 115. I'm then creating a variable x that is the result of summing those two variables plus some random data. In this simple example, I'm creating here some random data, and then I'm plotting a histogram using plt.hist. The result looks like this. And the cool thing is that just by calling plt.text and giving it the coordinates inside my plot where I want to see the text plotted, I can have that text wherever I want. You can customize the properties by passing keyword arguments into these text functions. So, for example, I could call plt.xlabel, give it the name of the label that I want, and I can pass parameters like the font size to be 14 and the color to be red, and we will see that in the X label here below. You can also use math expressions in text, like in this example. You can see more of that in the documentation. Matplotlib also allows you to do annotations inside the graph. Matplotlib also allows you to do annotations, like in this example, where I create a simple line plot, and then I use plt.annotate, and I give the coordinates of the arrow and the text where I want to see the annotation, and the result is something that looks like this. You can see this example in the Matplotlib documentation at the working with annotation section. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.